Hey guys, Jeff Henderson here. I bring you greetings from central Kentucky, a little town called Wilmore, where I live uh, in the shadow of Asbury University. Literally, I live just across the street from, from campus, about a two minute walk to uh, an auditorium called Hughes Auditorium, where you've probably heard once again, uh, revival has broken out a little over, I think it's about nine days ago now, what Asbury University is calling the uh, outpouring. Um, and I've had the honor and the privilege to be in the room quite a bit and to really mostly spend time praying for dear brothers and sisters who are neighbors and loved ones and like family to me who are responsible for overseeing all that God's doing in a very, very difficult and complicated way because, beloved, it's on a college campus. This isn't a, a church or an auditorium where people can come and, you know, and go. Um, and, and the auditorium just serves the purposes of whoever shows up. This is a college campus where kids are there living in dorms, where there's classes and there's cafeterias and there's campus security and there's all kinds of, of factors going on. But yet God has showed up uh, in a powerful way, yet again on this on this campus, um, there have been several significant revivals. Perhaps one that you've heard of is the 1970 revival that clearly touched touched the globe. And here we are again in 2023 with a Gen Z uh, student body who have been contending for revival. And a week ago, this last Wednesday, um, a, 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 just an awesome younger guy who is full of the Holy Spirit and loves Jesus. He's a radical church planter and evangelist at heart, preached a message that he would tell you if he was sitting here. It wasn't that great of a message. In fact, he ran out of time and didn't even get to the quote, good stuff, and had to just finish his, finish his message saying something to the effect of, hey, if you, uh, you're never going to be able to love the people around you in the way that God loves you unless you're filled with the Holy Spirit. So if you'd like prayer, I'll be here. And some people got prayed for, the chapel let out, chapel service let out, kids are going off to class and lunch, but a few stayed and they cried out. They stayed at the altar, they worshiped together, they continued to pray and then a few kids flooded back in and then over the course of the afternoon, the chapel began to fill up, again, the auditorium began to fill up and then the town word got out in the town and by that evening, the Hughes Auditorium was full and worship was continuing and off we went. Um, every revival, in my estimation, every revival that's ever existed has its own DNA, even if they're in the same family. I mean, if they're, if they're four or five brothers and sisters, they all share certain characteristics. They look alike in certain ways, but they also have their own personality. And that's true here. This is not Brownsville. It's not Toronto. It's not IHOP 2009, 2010. It's not Azusa Street. It's not you know, fill in the blank, whatever revival you want to bring to name. It's not the 1970 Asbury revival. It is marked by its own movement. It's marked by the, by the power of God and the presence of God and the, and the, and the power of the Holy Spirit in its, in its own special way. It's not marked by, oh, there, there's exhortation, there's testimony, there, are, there, there is um, salvation, call, there is healing, there's deliverance, there's all of these beautiful things that are happening. There are people who are repenting and confessing. There's reconciliation happening in the room, radical humility, radical generosity. I saw, I saw an outpouring of generosity for a young man who is on campus who doesn't have a job and is trusting God. That it was one of the most book of Acts things I've ever seen. Um, but this particular revival, I believe, is marked by worship. It is... A, a, a student-led, student-driven, no, no famous people, no names, no faces that you would know um, who are leading just hour upon hour upon hour of worship before the Lord, heartfelt, deep, beautiful worship deep into the, into the early hours of the morning. It was going all night, and I think now they've had to cut back some things for, for campus management purposes. Um, but really, it doesn't matter if you're in there at 1 a.m. It, it, it feels as though the worship is as vibrant as it was at 7 o'clock at night or whatever the case may be. And so I wanted to just give testimony to the, what I believe to be the validity of what God is doing here. And also, the reason I think it's so relevant for us, at FAI, um, I see so much cross-pollinization. I've had so many people come up to me, just tons and tons of people there in 
the auditorium and thank me for the work of FAI and our Maranatha Global Bible Study. So if you're watching this, you probably already track with us. And I want you to know that there is a, there is a, uh, a tribal feeling. There is a, a collective hunger that, that's in the room that the same way in which you hunger and thirst for the deep things of God, that's who I see joining in this room. And that's what I see amongst these Gen Z students who are, who are faithfully providing humble servant leadership to this is that they want to see God move deeply in their lives. And so um, I thank you if you are, are tracking with us. If you're wanting to know if you should come and be part of this, I, the answer I would give you is I don't know. I mean, I don't, I can tell you this tiny town is having a hard time fielding the people who are flooding in now. Things are changing every day with schedule and so forth. And I understand that uh, as the week we pass through the weekend and into Monday, they're going to start to limit the uh, evening services to 25 and under, which I think is a beautiful decision to to prioritize um, th this Gen Z, these emerging adults. And um, I don't know in the course of the next week what other changes will be made. I know that there's some things that are being announced. Um, I just want to say how much I am thankful for and I appreciate the humble beautiful leadership of Asbury University faculty and staff. Um, they have very much stayed out of the way, only leading where they need to provide leadership. The logistics support has been tremendous. Um, people are physically exhausted, but spiritually um, just al alive. And uh, just the testimonies of things that are happening uh, in the room or behind the scenes, the way that worship teams are prayed for and consecrated and then debriefed in prayer after their sets. It's extraordinary. They're allowing the Holy Spirit to pick each team that will go up onto the platform. Um, again, nobody, no names. This isn't a, 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 a revival that's marked by uh, names you would know. Uh, these are, are people who are phenomenal, wonderful servants of God who, who have been leading um, I believe, according to the spirit. And the other reason that I wanted to just come on and say something is I believe there is a deep, a, another deep connection with the work of FAI. And that's this, I believe if this is a real outpouring of God, it's not just about, uh, people coming here in 1970, the revival only lasted six days. And I believe it ended in six days because about, I think 2000 teams went out of Wilmore, Kentucky, to their homes, to the far reaches of the nation and to the nations with the to declare the glories of God and the wonders of God and what he was doing. The testimonies that began here in Wilmore went to the ends of the earth. And I believe that is a mark of revival, that it that the fire spreads. It might start in an epicenter, but it spreads out to the to the ends of the earth. And that's what I've been believing for. And I want to invite you if if you pray for our work, our our mission, our vision is exalting the worth of Jesus, just like what's happening in Hughes Auditorium, a worship-based uh, revival. We exalt the worth of Jesus amongst the unreached and unengaged at the end of the age. That's what I believe is, that that's the hunger and thirst that I sense in the room amongst these young ones, is they want to worship in a way, they want to love God in a way that will impact the nations. I heard a testimony a few nights ago as things were winding down very late at night, early in the morning, um, that had come in from a, let's just say a very closed country. And this group of missionaries were forced out of their, their village, violently forced out of their village. And they felt they had no choice but to leave um, in order to save their lives. And as they were leaving, apparently one of them received a, a message on his or her phone that was a 12 second clip of the worship going on in Hughes Auditorium, and they watched it together. And that 12 second clip of these young people worshiping their guts out was all it took for them to turn themselves around, go back into that village to present the gospel uh, to these beloved people who threatened to take their lives because they deemed these people who were unreached worthy of their lives. They went back into, into this village, presented the gospel. I believe they showed the Jesus film and the testimony is that the whole village has come to Christ. This beloved is what I believe happens when revival breaks out. And so if you're wondering if you, if you should come, I don't know. Um, I would say that God's is able to do where you are as he is 
to do what he doing what he's doing here. So do you need to come? No. But then again, I feel like um, somebody said it to me this way. You're like, so you're telling me that this could be a, he said to a friend, maybe you don't need to come. And the friend said, so you're telling me this might be a once in a lifetime move of God that might shake uh, the, the, the whole earth and might wake the church up from, from its slumber, but you don't think I should go. <laughs> he said, fair point. So I am by no means telling you not to come. Be warned if you come. It's crowds are pouring in. There's very, very, very long lines. There's tons of other venues in town you can go to, at least as it stands at the time that I'm recording this little message. You can go to three or four other chapels where what's happening in Hughes is being streamed, beautifully streamed into these other places. The spirit in these other venues to me is exactly the same as it is in Hughes. There's also, as long as the weather allows, there is outdoor lawn, outdoor lawn venue in front of Hughes. Um, again, I just want to commend uh, anybody who who is from Asbury University, if you happen to watch this, God bless you. You've done a you've done a tremendous job, and uh, the the time will come where the Lord will give you a real significant season of rest. And I believe He's supplying your needs even right now. And so I just want to close in prayer, Lord Jesus, thank you for your outpouring. I pray for these young ones who've gathered, especially those who are contending for this, that you would um, continue to answer their prayers, and that you would. Take what you've done here out to the ends of the earth. I pray for those who are coming, that they would come safely, that they would arrive safely, that they would be touched by you. For the hundreds who are being, um, who are coming to know you as Lord and Savior, for the, for the, I don't know the numbers, but for all who are coming, who are being healed, delivered, those who are confessing and repenting and returning to you, those who are reconciling broken relationships, and those who are being filled with your Holy Spirit and receiving gifts and those who are receiving a call to the nations and will go out and reach the, the most unreached people who remain, even at the risk of their own lives, Lord Jesus. I think of the, the words of Adoniram Judson. He says, in spite of sorrow, loss, and pain, our course be onward still. Lord, that's what I believe, that what you've begun here will set a course for some of these young Gen Zers for the rest of their lives that their course would be onward still. We sow on Burma's barren plain. We reap on Zion's hill. That Lord, send, send them out. Uh, send them out to their, their homes. Send them out to, into the far reaches of this nation, the darkest parts of this nation. And Father, send, send them out to the ends of the earth that what they sow on Burma's plain, they'll reap on Zion's hill. In Jesus' name, Maranatha.